about not only the lake, but the free electricity. And then there was a lake meeting just before Corona with the matrimony executives where the test lake was um, introduced. So in the meantime, quite something has happened, um, especially there are um, two new technical features which are part of the lake. And then I would like to say a few words also to the discussion with the trees in the lake bed, which is um, boiling the emotions of some people quite up here. So, Slava, let's start the first thing. You can't hear me? Okay, this way is better. Is it loud enough? Still more? Okay. Oh. Okay. Okay, so you see here a drawing of the mother. The mother has written a date on it, 25th June 65, which she had given to Huta, and that is sort of her master plan for Auroville. You have all the important elements which were obviously important for her at that time. In the drawing, you have the matrimandir. Next to it, you have the house of Uta. Just above the matrimandir, you have the amphitheater. You have the lake. You have the entrance area with a bridge. You have the four zones. You have the hill. And you have the multi-story building of which she was talking with the flat terrace from where one could overlook Oroville. Now, when she was making that drawing, she was turning several times the page so that um, the individual uh, pictures are uh, partially upside down or 90 degrees cross. Can you put the next picture? So here you see the hill, which is in the main picture here. Now, when you turn it so that the page is on top, then you see here the hill. Then, next picture. Um, this is the multi-story building. She had spoken about it, uh, which has a lot of um, stories and on top is a flat terrace from where you could see very far. Uh, the, this um, building as such is no more in the concept, but it found its implementation, I think, in the lines of force, which will have um, the same. You can interpret that from the entrance area to the hill, there is a direct road. Many things one can uh, or that on top of the hill there is maybe a restaurant, which often in Japan it is the case. Okay, next. So we have been discussing the lake now for nearly 30 years. So many different versions were there. Um, partially at some time it was only a water channel. Then um, many options came up. Um, Gilles Gigot once had proposed a lake which is only 25 centimeter deep because he thought anyway it has only a decorative function and no practical function. And um, here is something 20 year, more than 20 years ago we made at the Matrimandir a model of the Matrimandir and the lake, uh, then it came to Germany, we made the lake around. I went with a lorry, small lorry, to Le Cresté, to Roger's castle, and there we discussed uh, options of having the lake maybe in different steps and all. So it um, went through a lot of transformation, the proposed lake design, till finally now what we are having is again exactly the drawing of the mother just a clean geometrical shape, a ring, 
with a certain more or less uniform width, which I think is the best also for the practical um, purpose. Next. So um, this question, can the lake have uh, a practical function for the Oroville water system was one of the most uh, heated points for many years. Roger had um, made a proposal to the mother that from the Matrimandia Lake there would be rivulets flowing down towards the various communities there. It would be uh, cleaned in some purification plants and then pumped back to the lake. The mother obviously liked the proposal that the lake should have a practical function because then she explained Roger, uh, Saprem, Roger's concept. So we were always thinking what practical function could the lake have. And But now when we are actually building it and when it manifests, then we find so many practical functions which we didn't think of before. And um, there was always the utilitarian standpoint, which I was um, absolutely against it, which said we should make the lake only if it brings us something. Uh, for me, it was always that, okay, the mother had wanted it and she would have had her reasons. But then um, now we, uh, we are discovering that the lake will have a very big um, importance uh, both for the Oroville water management system as also for the electricity system. Next. Um, <coughs> in the lake there are um, always questions coming up. For example, why would the lake have to be so deep, 10 meter? Uh, if we want to use the lake as a storage system, then uh, obviously the flatter it is, the, um, the worse is the result of the storage. We have uh, here a net evaporation of approximately 40 centimeter. That means we have in our area uh, of evaporation over the whole year of 1 meter 70 and we have an average rainfall of 1 meter 30. So a net evaporation of 40 centimeter. If you have um, a lake which is only 2 meter deep, then 40 centimeter would be 20 percent loss. So the result would be in a ratio of 100 to 20. Here I've made a mistake, it should be 100 to 4, not 100 to 0 0.4. If the net evaporation of 40 centimeter goes with a depth of 10 meter, then what you lose in evaporation compared to your storage is only 4%. So actually it has a quite a good ratio. The same is of course for the cost whether you have a lake of uh, two meter depth, you need the same area, you need the same land, you need nearly the same amount of foil. So, and on top of it, the um, water heats up, so the evaporation will be even more than if the lake is 10 meter deep. So the, um, the best way to have a very efficient storage is to make it as deep as possible. And we have um, chosen as a sealant HTBE foil. We have, uh, before uh, making the lake, we had four test lakes where we checked out different sealants, natural clay, HTBE foil, bentonite mats. Um, and but um, and vacuum compacted clay, but we landed with HTPE foil. HTPE foil is uh, has many many advantages. Number one, the lake is 100% um, seepage free. There is not even 1% of loss due to seepage. 
then HTPE foil is practically indestructible. In Germany, the manufacturers for HTPE foils have to give a warranty of 100 years because it is used for garbage deposits where one is afraid that some chemical poisonous substances would go into the groundwater, so it has to be for a long term um, <coughs> intact. HTPE foil is totally inert against any acids. That's why it's used also for food. The, some of you will know what the Tupperware is, these plastic containers for food. That is actually HTPE, the Tupperware. Um, so uh, HTPE foil is uh, by far the best um, option what we found. And um, the, there are in Germany thousands of water bodies made with HTPE foil where uh, it's proven that um, it is long lasting, it uh, can um, withstand uh, the pressure of a certain depth. We have also done the uh, lake exactly according to the advice of the manufacturer and we have uh, quite a long guarantee for the HTBE foil and it is foiled by a specialist from Germany side who will come now again on the first, second of October and we, um, we have to bring the foil up the walls so that uh, it can hold the water for the next monsoon. So we feel quite confident um, with the HTPE foil as a sealant. Um, <coughs> An uh, another important um, point, in a technical point in the lake is the water quality where also HTPE is, because it's absolutely neutral, much better than natural clay, for example, also for root infiltration and so on. Uh, what we have now added to it is actually um, in the past years, there was always a little bit the competition between a desalination plant in our mind in the concept and uh, water storage or water harvesting. And I was always of the opinion that it's much more economic to desalinate the water, especially if you do it in an eco-friendly manner and with an energy regain system. So the costs for one cubic meter desalinated water would be relatively moderate. Uh, and uh, I never believed that one can, in our situation, store water for a price which would match uh, the low cost of desalinated water. But when we are moving forward now with this lake and we calculate the costs actually, um, especially with the new invention of the underwater cushion, storage, um, we actually come quite close to the costs of the desalination. So it um, actually is, I think, a viable option to store your uh, rainwater harvested water, especially for areas which are not at the coastline. At the coast, desalinated water, of course, has the advantage you can desalinate it or you can create it where you consume it. But inside the country, Coimbatore or whatever, there I think water storage is uh, absolutely important. And there you have um, Coimbatore, for example, the groundwater level is um, minus 300 meter, 400 meters, so you can't reach it anymore. So there uh, water storage is absolutely imperative. From the environmental aspects, that was always um, also a concern for me that usually when you build water storages, anything what you build, uh, whatever it is, has an impact on the environment. It always 
um, uses uh, carbon, or, or the techniques always lead to an emission of carbon dioxide and uh, using up resources and um, to store one cubic meter of water practically for a whole year if you are in an area where the water falls on the rain falls only in the monsoon and then you have to store the water till the next summer when you consume it and the cost of a storage for one cubic meter where you can store in one year only one cubic meter and the environmental impact always i thought was so high that also from the um, ecological point of view it makes no sense but uh, with the HTPE foil I think um, the impact on the environment is um, quite low compared of course to concrete basins which concrete is one of the worst um, polluter uh, regarding uh, carbon dioxide so I think also now with the uh, um, invention of the underwater uh, cushion, um, it makes sense also from the ecological point of view to go for rainwater harvesting and water storage. Next. So here you see the principle of um, the underwater storage, which we have developed while we were building the first section of the lake. Basically, you have um, underground uh, foil cushion, which you fill with water, which uh, folds up like an uh, accordion. It goes high when you need it, you fill it with water. And um, when you don't need it, next picture, um, you take out the water and it's absolutely flat again. And this cushion is uh, because the pressure from inside is equal to the pressure from outside water has the same specific weight in and out and then um, you can have it in any dimension with a relatively little effort the cost of such a water storage is only maybe five percent of what the traditional drinking water storage would be and with this in the Matrimandir Lake we can have um, if we want we could uh, we could store 500,000 cubic meter of drinking water and especially when it comes to the desalination plant then um, the first concept was that the lake would be filled with desalinated water but then uh, it's such a pity to waste your pure drinking water and mix it with uh, rainwater harvested dirty water. But if we have this underwater cushion there, we could um, let the desalinated water inside that cushion and the moment it fills up, the water level of the lake also will rise. In principle, you could have 50% of the uh, water in the lake in cushions and the other 50 percent of um, um, dirty runoff water or water which you can use only for irrigation and desalinated water anyway will never contaminate it doesn't develop bacteria because it is totally free of minerals and that means it's relatively aggressively attracting all minerals so if bacteria would form the water would kill it because it would decompose the bacteria so you can store desalinated water indefinitely long so um, in any case a desalination plant should run 24 hours all the time and the consumption pattern never matches the production pattern so you need along with it a storage for your drinking water so the concept now is that when the desalination plant is up and running then we would not let the desalinated water just flow into the lake but we will let it flow into the lake but in the underwater cushion 
so that um, it's not wasted and it would remain as drinking water. And then from there, the Matrimandia is the highest point in Oroville. From there, we can then distribute it into the various communities by gravity. And we have now uh, made the first cushion. And uh, a few days back, we pulled it into the water. The next few days, we will anchor it. We are just um, uh, sinking down some of the Lego blocks where we'll anchor it then. It's uh, HTP is slightly lighter than water, so it floats up. So we will pull it down, and then uh, Luca will link it uh, most probably to the uh, water system which is, I think, near the kindergarten. Um, there, is, uh, there we are quite close. And then Oroville has uh, drinking water storage inside the Matrimandia Lake, which uh, will be online in, in a few, maybe two weeks or whatever. We can, we can connect it. And the cost of it, if you compare, let's say, the, the elephant tower on top, our cushion has, I think, um, seven times um, the capacity what uh, that elephant tower has, and it costs only a few percent of it. And um, uh, so th this is a very, a very interesting option. Now, next. It was not so easy, actually, to find a geometrical form uh, which we can use. First we thought, okay, we only have to make a cushion and then we, we pump it full and it will be fine. But um, you always have, if here, like in this um, cornerless oval, you have a longitudinal axis and then uh, axis which is 90 degrees to it. And when it folds down, then on one side it folds in the longitudinal direction and on the other side in the other and where these two folds meet then you always get points which have a lot of stress and after 100 times filling and, and emptying there the foil would break. So we tried all kinds of um, geometrical forms. This one obviously didn't work. You can see the uh, the foiling is uh, the foils is such that um, if you operated after some time it will crack. Next one. This foil also, uh, this uh, geometrical form also, it didn't work. By the way, that is Said, our specialist, who is uh, coming now for the third time to Orville and, um, and will stay here for some time, for the fourth time. Okay, next. Here also we tried a form of uh, roundish type of a pie, um, but that also doesn't work. It also forms these folds which we wanted to avoid. Next time. Here we are trying, Jan is pushing um, a kind of a staircase inside. We, are, um, we had sealed that one from inside, um, the whole thing. Next. Here we are trying out the uh, shape of an American football. But that also finally turned out not to be functional. Next. Even a, a pure ball failed. Um, so we had a lot of, of tests. And then finally we um, came, the idea came up next, to make um, a cushion which has a flat top, which remains always flat, doesn't foil in and out, doesn't fold in and out. And uh, we have a kind of like an accordion, uh, some folds on the side, which uh, open then up only a little bit. Uh, the folds are not exactly the same like in an accordion. Next. Because in an accordion, as you can see, you always have, oh, now the laser point. Okay, it doesn't work, doesn't matter. So um, uh, next to one fold in, you have one fold out in the accordion. So uh, this way, if you would fold it up and down with HTPE foil on that point where the, um, 
the folds meet. Thank you. So that means here at this point, um, it would break after some time. Next. But uh, the way we are, have made it here now, we have one meter fifty long flat pieces of foil, which we weld here and here together. And then the foil can just bend here in the middle. There will be no nicking point. It will just bend ideally in a sinus curve. And since the foil anyway comes in rolls, next. Like here you see, we get the foils. We, we got nine containers, I think, or so of foil for the first section. So it comes in rolls and you can roll it. So the foil can bend um, in a certain angle without getting damaged. So this way, um, the, um, this is working perfectly fine. But um, we then discovered we have to still, of course, have some additional features. Next. Here you see the, um, the first one-to-one um, -one big cushion, uh, which we made then uh, with eight f folds all around. Uh, this is holding one million liter of drinking water. Next. Here you see it with Matrimandia in the background. There we have pumped it up with air to uh, see how it behaves. Next. Here you see an aerial view of it. Next. So um, if the water is out, it's absolutely flat. And if you fill it, then here, ideally, you have, uh, that was our plan only 25 centimeter in each fold where it opens up. But then we found if you don't control it, if you don't limit uh, each fold to the 25 centimeter, then on one side it will fold up, one fold huge, and on the other side not at all. So we have to have some additional accessories. Next. Like here you see, uh, um, in principle, we have to limit it, of course, not only one, but all around. Then we have to have an entry where uh, we could uh, insert a suction device like you have in these swimming pools, this robot which cleans and sucks out the dirt if some dirt accumulates. Then we have to have an air valve to release, and then we have some anchoring weights which um, keep it down. Next. Uh, with this um, invention of the uh, underwater storage with foil, you can do so many things. For example, you could have an uphill power storage if onshore, let's say in the Matrimandia Lake, we treat that as, an, uh, as the upper water reservoir. And in the open sea, you have the cushion then we would have 50 meter storage uh, height. And um, this is actually a problem of many desalination plants that um, they uh, are in big cities, let's say Chennai at the coast, and they need uh, storage for the drinking water because the water is consumed, let's say, only at 6 o'clock in the evening when everybody takes a shower. Um, but the plant has to produce constantly, and then Sunday they use maybe less or more or whatever. So every desalination plant needs a storage, but there is no space for the storage in the big city, and then it would be very costly. But since the desalination plant always is at the sea, you could easily have your storage inside the sea with that foil. And here we had made a concept just for uh, demonstrating what all one could do. If one would have the desalination plant offshore, not onshore, but offshore, and you would power it with solar panels floating on pontons, which then you buffer the solar energy in an uphill power storage, then you could have a closed system of a desalination plant, which takes care of itself and is independent from any outside energy source. 
Next. Here, um, three days ago, four, no, five days ago, we, we launched the cushion um, in the in the Matrimandia Lake, you can see it's still floating, and in a few days we'll pull it down on the ground and then um, uh, connect it, and then uh, store Oroville's drinking water in the Matrimandia Lake. There is another. <coughs> um, oh wait, what is coming is next? There is another interesting. There's, yeah, no, let's, uh, let's remain with this um, cushion. Um, the, uh, the principle of this underwater storage with the foil, uh, we have uh, registered the patent on it, and we have then gone to Naue, which is the manufacturer of our foil, which is the world leader in geofabrics and HTPE foil. Next one. So this is Alexander Naue, the owner of Naue. And they have a huge factory next here in Espelkamp. And when I uh, explained him the principle, he was quite surprised that his engineers hadn't thought about it. And they are very much interested to work with, uh, with us on this. And they see a big potential also in um, technologies when you have, let's say, you have an earthquake and you send um, um, drinking water purification plants there, but then you need storage to, you can't go with a plastic bottle and get your water. So they want to use this also in some other projects of there in South Spain, and they would be interested to work with us here in Oroville that we should become agents for their products in India which would be interesting because at Matrimandia now when the lake is finished we'll have a team which is perfectly trained for sealants of sealing the foils and we could um, come up with water storages um, in a big way next here you see for example if we would um, install uh, in-house drinking water supply in villages. Every village has a water pond. And um, the uh, water management system that every household has its drinking water, the most expensive part is the water storage. If now we would have in a village pond um, a water storage with our cushion, and we have one bore well, and then just a water tower where you pump it up, and from where, by gravity, it would then flow into the individual houses. Then, for a relatively small amount of money, you could modernize the traditional uh, way of um, drinking water supply in villages. Right now, it is that either every house has a small bore well or at least some water storage. You have a bore well and then you have a water storage underground tank and then you have an overhead tank on your roof and all this individual thing. If you combine all that, you have uh, one pump or, or different bore wells. You have one central water storage and then you distribute it to the houses. This could be um, a scheme for bringing um, modern and ecologically and economically viable way to, to the villages where I think this um, system has a big potential. Next one. Now there is another uh, new feature which we were talking about in the past in several meetings that we want to use the Matrimandia Lake as an uphill power storage for uh, buffering up solar energy. We have made uh, with the earth of the hill just next to the first lake section, uh, with the earth of the excavation, a small mini hill uh, of about 15 meters height. And we have foiled it. Next one and we have foiled it and this one has about a height of um, 15 meters. 
theoretically, we would get, if we have a volume of 2,500 cubic meter, we don't have yet 2,500, but we have enlarged that hill now, and when site comes, we would um, uh, enlarge it to 2,500 cubic meter. We could get theoretically um, eight, uh, storage for an, of 82 kilowatt hours there, if we had an efficiency of 80% with that low height and uh, that type of turbine which we get, we don't have that efficiency. We have maybe between 50 and 60% right now. But um, in, uh, if we use the um, if we use the hydropower storage system for the full lake, then uh, make the next one. Here you see again the, the upper storage lake. If we would use it for the full lake, or if we would use it, which we had thought, for a lake on the hill, then of course we get very good figures. Next. Uh, we have already ordered the pump, the turbine. Um, it should come in six weeks, six weeks, something like that. Then we will connect it, the piping, everything is done. And then we have, I think it's the third in Tamil Nadu, the third uphill power storage in Tamil Nadu. And it's the first worldwide, which is directly linked to a solar plant. We want to link it to the Matrimandia solar plant, where then we can increase the capacity right now. It makes no sense to put more solar panels in the high tension zone because we are producing already so much that at peak hours we have to export it into the grid, which is not very interesting. But if we can add more storage like with this, then we can put up more solar panels. Ideally, we would like to reach there that um, we can produce all the uh, uh, energy from Matrimonia from, for its all, from its solar plant right now. One third of the electricity the Matrimonia consumes comes from its own solar plant. If we can increase the storage, we could increase the solar plant and that would of course then be a fantastic thing to demonstrate also that you could run Matrimandi in an island mode. Next. Here it, we see the calculation for a small lake on the hill. The hill would have a height of about 30 meter once it comes in the um, north side, inside the green belt uh, we are planning. So there, with about 30,000 cubic meter, we can store 5,000 kilowatt hours already. Next. If um, we would uh, have an underwater cushion in the open sea and we would use the Matrimandia Lake as upper storage, if we lower the lake only one meter and we have the 50 meter height difference, then uh, we, the lake has an area of 160,000 square meters. So we would then have 160,000 cubic meter water and that would give us um, a potential storage of 17,500 kilowatt. And with such a big quantity, then we really reach an efficiency of 80%, which is much better than any battery storage uh, you could think of. So these are the two um, new developments in the Matrimandia Lake, which show that we have um, Really, the lake is giving us, now we are thinking only of these two things, it gives us the possibility to structure our uh, Orville water management system in a totally different way, in a very ecological way also, and especially also for the electricity system of Orville, if we can have an, an uphill power storage um, where we are now installing the first uh, pilot plant that would also change the parameters of our electricity system. So the uh, um, claim of the anti-lake or villains that this is only for decoration and makes no sense, that is no more so now. Um, the lake will have a very important role to play in Orwell's uh, infrastructure. 
Next. So now, um, let's come to the trees. Uh, every uh, water body has a certain patrimetic geometry and resulting thereof has a certain um, current mechanism. If you have wind flowing over the, over the surface of a lake, then you always get a current at the surface here, which goes along with the wind. And then when the water reaches the end of the water body, it goes down and you get the counter current on the bottom of the lake. And this current is very, very important for the underwater biology because with the wind you get a wave movement and with the wave the air hits the water in an angle. It doesn't just um, blow over it, but it hits the water in an angle and thereby you get a lot more oxygen into the water than if the wind just blows over it. And then you have the oxygen rich surface water which then goes down and brings the oxygen into the lower parts. The problem with a lake with 10 meter is that the sunlight goes maximum till five meter or so. And in the lower part of the lake, I mean, it's very good that you have, um, that you have a big water storage and that the water remains cool. But you have the problem that at the bottom of the lake where no light reaches, you have no algae and no water plants which could produce oxygen and then you tend to get uh, an anaerobic milieu where you have fouling water and um, that then produces a lot of sulfur. You get then algae growth and all that. So oxygen in the lower parts of a deep water body is a must. And for that, you need a circulation of the water. Next. Now, if you have no clear geometry with a flat uh, bottom of the lake, but you have a bump, then this um, flow doesn't happen so easily anymore. You get your um, surface uh, current, but then when you have the counter current from uh, at the bottom and it has to go up and collides with the surface current, then the whole mechanism stops. So you have to see always that your profile of the lake underwater is very symmetric, very smooth, and doesn't provide disturbances for the current. Next. Now, luckily, with the Matrimandia Lake, we will most probably have a current because the southern part here is uh, elevated. It's six partially six meter higher than the town hall part. Rather, the town hall part is below the lake. The floor of the town hall is one meter 30 below lake level. So that means um, in the elevated parts where on top of it you have here, let's say, trees, the wind will hit the lake much less than here in the flat area where you have nothing and where um, it's not protected by a surrounding which is higher than the lake. And that means when we have, um, let's say here, um, east wind, that you get a current because here the water is pushed by the wind much more than on the opposite side. So we will have in the Matrimandia Lake always a current. When we have um, west wind, we have the current clockwise. When we have east wind, we have the current anti-clockwise. And this current is very, very important because then we have an underwater biology of not a stagnant water body, but um, a flowing water which means that we won't have algae problems and all that. So we have to see that we keep this um, current um, 
possible in the Matremandia Lake. And therefore, we have to see that we don't build in things which would block that um, current. Next. Now, if, for example, you build a peninsula, which uh, is uh, discussed quite a bit at present, then a peninsula requires, you cannot build a peninsula and then here just come down, but it requires the same, like here we have the shore one, two, three, you have the same ratio of the shore there. That means a peninsula, which has only one third of, uh, intrudes only one third of the full width of the lake and two thirds you see the water. People may think, okay, it blocks it only one third, but that's not true. You have 60% of the cross section of the lake body blocked by a peninsula which goes only one third into the lake. Next one. And um, in reality, you block it much more because then when the current comes, you get here your worlds, which again are counterproductive. So with a peninsula, which goes in only one third, in the end, you block maybe 80% of your current. And that means only with very strong winds, you would get at all a current. So. Um, there is the discussion in our own team, always I'm absolutely against um, peninsulas because uh, they will take away the, the current of the lake. And that means we'll have severe problems in maintaining a good water quality, which um, if we keep just the strict geometrical form as the mother has drawn it, nothing else, no schnick schnack. Um, that would be the best from the point of view of the underwater biology. Next. Now, um, it is as bad, of course, if we have an island. Let's say we have a single tree, and you have to make that tree also on a cone with a shore of one to three. That means with one island of one tree, you block your whole lake inside, and uh, you create a huge mess for your underwater biology just for the purpose of having one tree there. Apart from it, the storage uh, capacity, of course, goes down because this uh, cone on which the um, tree stands has a huge volume. And then the foiling of the cone is much more complicated in the usual foiling. You just put the foils straight down, but here you have to have triangular uh, things. Or So um, that one tree, it creates such a mess and is extremely costly, has an extreme uh, effort. And of course, it reduces your quantity of stored water tremendously. Next. And on top of it, um, such a single tree in a single island has no chance of survival. Absolutely impossible. Because the uh, soil below is absolutely dry. Here you have to foil it up to here. If you don't foil it till top or put some, some stones there or so, the waves of the water and when the wind blows, it will erode, the soil will wash the soil out from the roots and uh, a strong storm will anyway then take away the tree. And so you have only a very small area where um, water from the rainfall can really come onto the soil on top of it. Tree always has that kind of umbrella effect where it leads the rainfall to the outside and then the water drops down only on the outside. And in that case, if you look at that neem tree, which is there right now, um, most of the rainfall wouldn't even reach a small um, place uh, where the water could come in. But let's presume that even uh, some water would come in because here it's absolutely sealed on both sides, minimum 40 meter. No humidity can come in the underground. That means that little water which comes here will diffuse immediately into the dry soil, which is totally dry. All the roots would only then go there where the water is, will be flat on top. 
and the next big storm anyway would just blow it away, the tree. On top of it, it would st starve because that little water which is here uh, will not be enough to um, fulfill the demand of the trees and then uh, the moment the capillarity breaks because not enough water comes up, then the uh, the trunk gets dry and then the tree is, is uh, finished. And then you don't have in this area the usual conditions. If you have a natural uh, sealant, like if you have clay, then this won't happen. In, in a uh, clay sealed uh, water body, you can have islands because the roots will penetrate the clay and will go to the, into the water and, and get their water and then also a certain minimum humidity will be in the soil. But in our foiled lake, there will be no earthworms, there will be no microbes, there will be this whole um, earth flora and fauna which a tree needs is simply not there. It's a totally artificial and unhealthy condition. So a tree in, in this way, if we would make a cone with foil, has no chance of survival. So the only chance that that tree there survives is if we transplant it. Uh, we simply cannot make um, a cone and, and uh, then anyway, after a few years, let's say a storm comes and, and blows it off, then we have that huge cone in the lake for no rhyme or reason, which blocks the whole thing, which takes away so much storage. It would be much more reasonable for that amount of um, money and effort and hustle which we import by such a device that we say, okay, let's put up a certain amount and then we plant new trees. If we want to do it in an emotional way, fine. We can take cuttings from the tree and make uh, seedlings and, and take from that tree itself and plant, let's say, 100 neem trees somewhere else. But more wise it might be if we put up an amount and just support uh, an afforestation program somewhere in Uti or I don't know where it really makes sense, where it has an impact in nature. Here we have so many neem trees. If we transplant that neem tree, um, it has no relevance for for nature here, with, if with that money we um, support some afforestation project somewhere, we could maybe really do something for the environment. So I think one should sit together and seriously think what makes sense and then maybe do something for the growth of trees in India or whatever. But um, this what is the discussion now with this neem tree there is just um, makes absolutely no sense. Okay, so that now would be it. So um, now I'm expecting your questions. Okay. <laughs> oh, one second, one second. Better you take the microphone. Hello. The lake would be really popular with me if you would make a nice accessible swimming pool out of it from the park side. I actually also would like to swim in the lake. <laughs> but um, okay, that anyway will change with every new set of secretary of executives, I think. Some will say yes, some will say no. So you'll have that discussion every, I don't know, four years then. <laughs> The present ones are absolutely against. Michael, I'm here. Okay. I'm the one who, one of the ones who's been defending the tree. My name is Mita. Yes, you have sent, sent me, I think, yes. uh, 50 WhatsApps by now. Yeah. 50 um, pictures at least. Firstly, I want to say thank you. Thank you for making this presentation. I think it was really important to share this thinking and what's going on. So first, I want to say thanks. Second, uh, I think it's very important for these ideas which you have just shown like this to be evaluated by experts and especially hydrogeologists. This whole thing you're seeing, for example, I saw in that picture where you showed the direction of the wind, 
I'm sorry, but when I've been under the tree, the direction is not in the direction that you have said. It comes in different ways. So this whole thing that you will completely stop the circulation of the current, I don't think that's true. I think that needs, we don't just take your word for it. It needs to be evaluated, and I would like to see that happen. And maybe if you could get that evaluated, um, I'm not sure who, will, who would, um, there's one or two people I can think of, and we can talk about that later. But just presenting it like this, I'm sorry, that's not enough for me. We need to have it evaluated properly, because this is all, anyway, mother's money, right? So, and it is for Oroville as a whole. We all care for Oroville. And um, I think you're using a kind of a technical kind of reasoning, which I think it doesn't bridge. And I believe that we can find a bridge. And we need to find a bridge between the factions and between the different perspectives. So the reason why I'm hanging on for that tree is because of this possibility of the bridge which we need to do after 54 or whatever years, right? So one, let us please get it actually evaluated by some hydrogeologists, people who have experience with lakes, Indian, not Indian, a mixed team. Please let it be evaluated. I think we owe it to ourselves in Oroville and of course to you with all your efforts that you have put in. It okay. needs evaluation. See, um, obviously you are not aware what we all have done. We have a scientific team from the LGA Nuremberg with, uh, we have a scientific team in Nuremberg from the LGA, which is the biggest uh, scientific institute in Germany. And there we have Jochen Köhler, who has been so many times here, who is an underwater biologist. We have Carlo Schillinger. Uh, the LGA team has built the biggest water bodies in Germany. They have made the Brombach Lake with an area of 18 square kilometers. They have made uh, the uh, Rhine Main Danube channel, they have made so many water bodies and they are the absolute specialists and they have told us exactly that. So, uh, if and it's they in are writing, uh, one, share it. Yeah, uh, and uh, we have done so much research. We have done, for example, in the lake bed. 10 core drillings where we have taken out the soil, we analyzed it in a scientific institute in Surat, in the hill area, we have done core drillings. We had Mr. Goldenbaum here from Germany, a scientist in this field who had coordinated all that. We have regular meetings each and at each and every step what we do at the lake. We verify with our scientists in Germany. So we have done that for now the, the team of the LGA, they are with us more than 20 years or, or even more. Maybe, I don't know, the ones of you who are here longer, we had in the very beginning, once I think in Paradnivas, a water conference where they were there, where we invited other Indian water specialists and we started from there and they are accompanying us uh, all the while, so I think we are quite well staffed with scientists who are part of this and um, who are telling us exactly uh, what, uh, what we should do. Michael, I hear what you're saying, but could we have an independent evaluation? That's all. Yeah, but they are independent, they have no stake in it. Uh, Michael, Michael, could you could you just elaborate uh, one a couple little things? Okay. Uh, first, uh, thank you very much. 
for the great work. Uh, I just have uh, some considerations about the 10 meter depth. Uh, what I understand from you is that the currents will take care of the toxicity at that depth. Because an engineer has told me, once you go over 2.5 meters, uh, the insulation of that cold water down below will, as you said, uh, become toxic. So we're going to have in the lake, I understand, fish and plants. So there will be uh, things that will drop down and will reach the bottom. So I, I don't know, are there, do you, have you uh, thought about how to keep the lake, let's say, clean or how to test the, the water uh, at all depths, uh, you know, regularly, so we don't get into a toxic uh, situation with the water. Thank you. Yeah, this is, of course, um, the discussion since um, so many years, and we had different opinions. Some say, don't go below four meter because, as I said, the light will not reach below, so you will get an anaerobe um, system there. And then the other scientists, also Harald Kraft and others, they say, um, as long as you keep the geometry clean and you allow a current to happen, you have no problem. And there are, of course, also big um, water bodies. For example, in Jinji, you have very deep lakes and they are quite clean. So it doesn't mean that uh, invariably when you have a water body which is deep, it's not, it's not clean. You have to just see that you have a, a flow of the, of the water, then it's okay. So this is uh, the important thing for the underwater biology. If you don't have that, then you have to introduce artificial oxygen, then you have to have a fountain which um, brings oxygen in the water and so on. But if you keep it the way as we have foreseen it now without um, any uh, bumps and islands for trees and peninsulas and all that stuff, then I think we will be fine. That's what, uh, what we hope and what we expect. But that's also um, one of the uh, research works we have to do with this. We have to demonstrate once this whole lake is finished and it's a circle and uh, do we get a current or not? What will be the water situation? And all? It's very interesting. But from all what we hear from our specialists, it should work. Arvinda here. Ah, I'm here. The mic. Yeah. Afterwards, Laba, can you? Yeah. Okay. Shall okay. I continue, or you want to take it? Some? Okay. So um, my understanding was that the test lake was made, and its test would finish in two more years. When it is fully filled in, then we could have perhaps all these things experimented what happens to the depth and all those things. And uh, I was also told that only last year we finished the channel. And at that point, this tree and other trees were the viewing point and a stone wall was built. It wouldn't have been done unless there was a plan to continue this experiment for longer, because you wouldn't build all this channel up to the current test point and in one year again rip it out and undo all those stone walls. So my one question second, is... One second. Um, you were understanding that we make a test lake and then afterwards take it off? No. Oh. What I understood from the engineer who was responsible for the test lake, that that experiment was to finish in three years, till it fully, fully filled in, and we see all the effects. So the question about the depth that is there now, whether toxicity will happen at the bottom or not, will be answered if we let this test lake take its time to, to, to finish the experiment before continuing with the rest. So it seems to me that from what I heard about the test lake part, and secondly, what I hear what was done just last year with the channel thing, that there was a plan to keep this test lake for longer. And now, before it is even filled up, we are already moving on to the next. 
that seems to be a bit of a concern. Other thing for me, when I look at this map in front of me and this diagram, uh, I am not an engineer, but I have worked a lot with water bodies, gardening and all that, and I see a lot more solutions to keep this soil healthy. The one thing that is very peculiar in our lake here is the HDF foiling, which is making the surrounding environment underneath and around not natural because it is cutting off what would have happened in the natural environments. Like the Jinji Lake that you spoke of, it's so deep. It is healthy because it is, there is no HDF foil there. So it has a natural flow of life from ground to water and everything else. So with HDF foil, we are changing a lot of things here, and we need to experiment properly. Thank you. Um, two things I want to say. First of all, um, if we stop now with the first section, then uh, very important parameters will not be completed. So we cannot test, we cannot test, for example, with this first section, whether there is a current in this um, ring form of the lake, which will be good enough to keep the water uh, biology healthy. If, uh, I'm absolutely sure, if we have um, a ring shape and one part is in the wind shadow because the surrounding is higher and one part is not in the wind shadow, then, um, and here anyway, most of the wind direction, okay, it may vary a little bit, is either from east to west or from west to east, either from the sea to the land or from the land to the sea. And exactly in that direction is our oval, and exactly in that direction is that the southern part is in a wind shadow and the northern part not. So this kind of uh, current in the lake you can test only once uh, the whole thing is completed. If now we wait for three years or four years with the first section and then we make the next section and we wait again for three or four years and all that, then I will not see the end and you maybe also not. So I think um, let's complete it and then see. And HTPE foils in Germany, there are thousands of water bodies with HTPE foil. We don't have to now make a test if there are so many water bodies already, we can just see what they do. Why do we have to reinvent the whole thing? I think it's manageable. Uh, where's the mic now? It's there. Hello. Yeah. Yeah, thank you for this presentation. We've been wondering what this lake is all about. We've been waiting for... Yes, we've been waiting for five to ten years to hear and understand what this lake is all about. And I appreciate very much personally the amount of work that has gone into it, and I have no doubt about the sincerity of this attempt. But if you don't mind my saying so, we have also dealt with experts who charge between $1,500 and $2,000 a day on issues. We've dragged them to courts in India and proved them wrong. After hearing from you and your understanding of what we are trying to say, being reduced to this ridiculous drawing up here, which you label us with, of this hill in the middle of a lake, and then tell us that this is not practical. The only thing it shows is that you have no understanding whatsoever of what people have been trying to say, or what they want to understand about the lake. Having said that, as I say, we would be deeply interested in receiving real scientific material from you on the various aspects you have raised. So from Mother's Time to today, there will have been several scientific reports, especially today. And if you are telling us that the Mathramandir Committee has accepted your proposal 
but it means to me that they have studied that proposal and they have accepted the liabilities that possibly arise out of this attempt. The liabilities arise from the start of the desalination plant to the top of the watershed, for one. Then the collateral effects of doing this dam and this lake right on top of the watershed. Of that, I take it that you and they have accepted the liabilities, including digging out of the soil of this colossal volume, which we may need to receive back into Oroville and for purposes that it did fulfill previously on the lake. So please don't sell that soil, nor tinker with it. As far as the, as far as the desalination plant is concerned, yes, we would like to understand more about it and how you would possibly want to face the situation of the saline buildup in coastal zones, which will affect not only fisheries, but also the water on coastal belts where that deeply salted water will seep back into the land. Anyway, many of those questions are open. What we would like is, I think, this matter should be taken up and presented to Oroville in a formal manner, by taking it to the residence assembly, along with all the data which we would like to see, without which I don't think Oroville should approve this plan. Okay, um, one, one question. What you wanted to know about the desalination plant with the, with the uh, um, saline water going into the soil? What, what was the question there? Can you repeat that? I didn't get it. With any, with any desalination plant, there is refuse water Yes. Which is returned back to the sea. Yes, absolutely. And that water is usually piped out at a certain distance. Yes, we after have 500 meters uh, out of the distance. After yeah. adequate studies have been done to ensure that the water does not wash back towards the shore. Because if it does, and sometimes it emerges from the emission pipeline in plumes, it is not dispersed it emerges in plumes, and those plumes have no way of, we have no way of knowing how those plumes drift, and those drifts can move back towards the shore, it can move along the shore, and where, as I said, it will not only impact fisheries, but it will also impact water bodies close to the sea, where that water gets pulled back into the land to the wells that are in the surrounding areas. And this may be from anything from one to 10 kilometers from your output point. Okay. And that is, wait a minute, that is a minor point. I'm much more concerned with the actual working of the lake on top of the hill. And as I see this reservation that was expressed by Arvinda on HP, HDPE, I share. However, I'm not saying that I'm questioning the feasibility, I'm saying let us look at the studies. I don't know why you want to hide the studies from the community you wish to serve. I don't know why you want to not be as honest as you can in, for example, twisting the entire arguments of the health of the Mathramandir and Mathramandir Gardens as you have done by reporting it in this ridiculous manner of saying, oh, well, you want to save this tree, we will replant it in the Nilgiris. Please don't be ridiculous. Okay, now on this um, desalination plant, obviously you have not been in any of the meetings where I explained the concept of our deep salination plant. We have made an environmental impact study, which is that thick. We have made bathymetric studies where we, um, we're monitoring the currents uh, at the shore in front of our desalination plant. And I can assure you that definitely no brine will flow back underground into the land. It's the opposite way. 
we are desalinating water, we bring fresh water on shore, there it will be used, like you will drink it, then you will go to the toilet, then it goes in your seepage tank, and then the fresh water goes in the aquifer, and then it creates the opposite underground movement. Every drop of water which is desalinated and brought it onshore is counteracting the intrusion of the salt water into the aquifer. Let me finish. And uh, what you say about the brine forming formations, this is exactly the most dangerous part of a desalination plant, for example, in Chennai, because when you press the water through a membrane, then due to the high pressure, all the oxygen goes out. So your brine has no oxygen anymore. And because it has a higher salt content, the usual salt content is 4.5. Uh, percent, the brine has 6.5 percent, so it's heavier, it falls down on the ground and forms a carpet, and thereby stifles everything what is um, on the ground, which is actually the source of the bio life in the sea. And I don't understand how, for example, these Chennai desalination plants, they got permission. They are emitting, the, the one which is there since longest, is emitting every day 450,000 cubic meter of brine and uh, discharges it in one point only 200 meter from the shore. Uh, which means the whole bay is dead. We have done quite some studies by uh, specialists from Larsen and Turbro and all that. We have a system where we uh, put the brine out 500 meter. We are desalinating only 5,000 cubic meter per day. And we have other um, features like an energy regain system where we use very little energy because the pressure which we use to build up, to push the water through the brine, when we release the brine, we regain it from the brine to increase the pressure of the fresh seawater. We are using zero chemicals in the whole process. All the other desalination plants, they use chlorines to flake out the plankton. We are letting it flow through quartz glass, glass and, and kill the plankton with uh, heavy UV light and so on and so on. So our purpose of making that plant is to demonstrate that you can have a desalination plant with zero chemicals with no negative impact on the underwater biology and with green energy. And once that functions, and we have demonstrated that, which will be the only or the first plant in India, then we were thinking of scaling it up maybe along the coastline instead of what is being built now, which is a catastrophe. Uh, so we are actually absolutely on the track and our concern and our knowledge, I think, I'm sorry if I offend you, is a little bit deeper than yours in at least this subject. But see, since... <laughs> Okay, fantastic. Um, we have discussed, we have discussed that. We have, we have sh shared this, we have shared this with um, the, T the various TDCs in the past for so many times. And we have discussed it the last 25 years so often. Yesterday, just for fun, I checked in my emails record how, how many emails do I have where the name Sauro appears. Not that the email was to Sauro, but where 
maybe it was to Toby, or God knows he was in copy, or just we were talking, Sauro. Now, how many emails do you think I have my inbox with the name Sauro? What do you guess? 1,700, 1,700. And we are just getting fed up after 30 years to explain again and again and again and again. After some time, you have to come to the point and do it. And then only you see, you can theoretically discuss and discuss and discuss. He has all the stuff he has from 20 years. No, I don't have any more. Not, not <laughs> to say, but I didn't know it was so popular to be quoted 1,700. Mm. Mm. Yeah. If I can make some... I, I, Arjun, I was coming to that. <coughs> this is nasty. This is not all right. So please stop it. Continue. Okay. Thank you for making the presentation, Michael. I think uh, we have not talked for quite many years. We had no occasion. I didn't know I was so popular to be quoted <coughs> so many times, but. Um, uh, I remember that there is some question, and still this question is not answered today. I mean, that is the main point. It comes how we share the information, because if we share the information, things go fast and move. If information are not shared, things get stuck or complicated. Um, I asked the Michael because I have one question, very simple, because I was triggered at the beginning of your presentation by your statement about the cost comparison between uh, harvested water and um, uh, desalinated water. So I was simply going to ask if you can share the data and make public. But then it turned to have a discussion about how to have the information and make it share. I remember that when we arranged for Arl Craft to do the Asia Urbs pro uh, pro uh, project and he made the pre-feasibility study, we have uploaded on the internet it's still uploaded there after 20 years, and there was no harm. Actually, it has been a good source of information for people, but nothing has been public until then, except this discussion meeting. So my invitation to you is really to change this approach and to be more open to have, you say you have a lot of study of scientists, etc. please share them. Yes, Love is an excellent webmaster. He can, he can put in website with all the information. I mean, uh, sharing information will help a lot. Uh, Have you ever looked at the yeah, Varuna yeah. website? Yes. Then I'll come into my overall question and comment is, uh, I mean, there are many questions which can be raised by your presentation, but it seems that by this approach, I mean, a decision has been taken about uh, the entire uh, water system and energy system of um, how a city of 50,000 people is managed. So that is raised my question. I mean, that, that why there is a need to have a more inclusive approach, because we are talking of, by making a lake, we take the decision about how the water is managed and the energy managed. And this managed in a centralized way. So this is the question that is of general community concern, that concern all citizens or all people involved in the construction of Arville. So this question should be, uh, should be a bit debated more. The second point is, uh, I have nothing against your system or against the lake, etc. I mean, but, we'll say, but the system you have, you are proposing since uh, many years, is it worthwhile financing? I mean, a few years ago, when we had the last discussion, I heard that the energy system was able to give a backup of one hour. I don't know if your data has been changed now, but is that worthwhile to have all this complex system to have a backup of one hour, if there is no electricity, can we just make, as a community, other investment in terms of alternative energy or decentralized energy? That is one question which is not absolutely um, one, one, one second. I'm, I'm just question whether still the data is correct. If your information is that the backup, 
the solar, the energy that you generate with the pumping up and down from the, uh, from the lake to the lake, he can provide a backup system of electricity for one hour. And I'm just asking to answer later on if this is still the correct information or if there is any change. Um, the last point, which is of a certain concern, is that, I mean, the system depends a lot on technology, complex integration of technology, which is fine, I have nothing wrong against this, but requires a lot of efficiency and a lot of investment, capital for investment and for maintenance. So I don't see any consideration for that. We don't know, do we have the resource to start the system or we just get stuck in the middle? Do we have the resource of maintaining? Do we have the capacity to maintain the system? And whatever you have said regarding combining resource of harvested water and desalinated water, still the use of the lake for uh, water supply in the city, the way you have presented, depends a lot on desalinated water. <clears throat> and I don't see the desalination plan come anywhere in 2028 where the lake is being completed. So I note a discrepancy between the plan to complete the lake in 2028 and the fact that it is depending whether we like it or not on the realization of desalinated water that is not nowhere in the, doesn't seem realistic to have this functioning for 2028, at least on the information we have. So there is a lot of questions that has to be solved. Maybe your system will function perfectly Everything will go well if the system functions perfectly. But if there is, the system are not synchronized, the supply with the sanitary water, the maintenance, and the capital is not enough, we remain middle of the way, and we may create some kind of uh, social disaster in terms of supply, et cetera, or in terms of aesthetic disaster as far as matrimandir is concerned. So this question would be worthwhile not to answer now, but it would be worthwhile to consider and make part of a general discussion. Then one last small thing is just regarding the argument you took of the island blocking the water supply. If you put, if you put the storage and they are full, I mean, they create a block in the wave, no? It's not the same like in Alan. I can add, that, that is one question which I have, I mean, that is... Okay. Uh, the, uh, and one last question, I remember that Sorry, I, I, one and it's over. But I remember that one parameter of Roger, maybe my memory is wrong because I'm not dealing with this much, it was the fluctuation should be maximum one meter. But if you use the water harvest for irrigation, then it will be much more than one meter in the course of, of uh, during, during a season. So that's my last question. Okay. Um, the thing with Roger, uh, the Matrimandia Lake is a lake right now, if you see it from the testing purpose or research purpose. Um, can, uh, Slava, can you put the first picture with the drawing of the mother again? Um, where we install certain principles and demonstrate that yes, you can have a water storage which is 10 meter deep, you can do this, this, this. Um, whether for what we use the water then is another question. Uh, and Roger's thing of one meter is fine. It is um, one meter. That's why, for example, I have said that we would use it for the uphill power storage, maybe only for one meter. But um, one thing in general I have found at Matrimandia, for example, with quite a number of things, that when there is a clear instruction or a vision of the mother, where the mother has said, okay, I have seen this, and she said, I have seen it more real than I see you when she spoke to Satprem. And she has given a clear instruction what should be done. Even if, like from my own private experience, if in the first instance I didn't understand it, and then when still we realized, then in the course of realization we found there is so much truth in it that I'm sure when um, the mother has made the drawing with the lake 
um, that and all our scientists tell us, yes, this is the way you should do it, that then we don't need the authorization of you or you or you or you, then we have the duty to try it out and see um, and um, we can go on this discussion. There will every year some per new person will come and say, hey, I have not been informed. Why are you hiding uh, the information? We had so many information meetings. We had so much exchange. Um, I think we are coming to a point now where we have to try it out and then we will see. I have judges, judges, then Frederick, then one more person there. You mean the underground cushion? Yeah, the plan is to have them all in one level. Let's say if we have them all two meter or three meter high maximum, one next to the other, then you have again your geometric form uh, uniform. We would not have an underwater cushion which we uh, fill up till nearly the surface and then block the lake. But we will have uh, a battery of cushions which will only uh, inflate up to two meters or something like that. Uh, uh, thank you, Michael, for your presentation. I think it took a lot of time for this presentation. And I could see so much energy went to this uh, project, starting from your presentation to Jay in France, and so on. And really appreciate this, your dedication. And I was in Matri Mandir executive. I was in Matri Mandir as executive from 2017 to uh, 2000, beginning of 2020. And I had opportunity to work for this. Uh, that was by the time, by the project. way, that was the time when the decision came to start the lake. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's the thing. I, I could observe that to get green light from uh, Maturi Mandir team and TDC, it was very difficult for you. So, but you could start this project, it was because you could, it was for the test lake. Yes, so it means, test means you first test a small piece of the entire project and you see the result and then assess and observe through the year. Like we have extreme uh, weather, like uh, very heat and also the heavy monsoon and mild winter. So I think it is very logical to observe all this process through the year, ideally maybe two years, one more, maybe more than my, one year, because these days we can't really predict the climate, climate changes there. So I was actually hoping today to see the result because I was working with you and it was sort of promise to the Matoni Mandir team and also to the community that Baruna team, Lake team will present this, uh, do this experiment and then we shall see. It's kind of this approach. So today I feel somehow there is kind of sense of hastiness in the process that kind of you're going to a party, but you're not wearing trousers. So it's a little bit not complete. So I think what we want to see is actually the first part to be fully complete and to see the result, including uh, oxygen level in the water and pH level and how the aquatic life they live and also trans uh, evapotranspiration, -trans sorry, I don't know, about evaporation level. So I think all this actually, I believe that this request is not something uh, blocking the process. It's rather encouraging your process to make it more concrete and steady. So I think I'm not asking you too much to the lake team. So that why don't you uh, complete entire test lake and then you can, at the same time, in parallel, you can uh, arrange a lot of scientific, uh, you know, so highly engineering, uh, engineered uh, projects. I think this will not really contradict your spirit of dedication and also the offering to the mother. So, but and also one, one more thing is that today, I really wished Maturi Mandir team to be here with you to present the presentation with you, Maturi Mandir executives because they make decisions together. 
But somehow this isolation for me is a little bit uh, strange to me. So I really wished for these two things today. But generally, I really appreciate your dedication and that you are the most hardworking person I ever worked with. I really respect that. See, the, the testing of the test lake has not stopped. It goes on and on. Uh, with the next section, we have, again, different conditions. We have a different water body. And what we have seen now, while we do it, we find so many things which are interesting, which we didn't know before. So I think the value of the test lake and the results of the tests will be much more if we continue than if we wait now. The, um, uh, some results are already very clear, which was one big question, for example, that I had the feeling before that commercially and effort-wise, um, uh, open water body stands nowhere compared to a desalination plant. There, I really had to change my mind and see that things are possible which were not possible. Um, or which I didn't think of without that. And I think the bigger the lake grows, the more we will find out. And um, the testing results will be much better if we continue than if we stop now and sit on this and look at it for three years. Um, uh, HTPE um, lakes have been made so many. That was one doubt which many people had, will really a 10 meter lake work or will it get a hole and the water get out? So um, from my point of view, I think we should, for the sake of testing and research, we should continue and not stop. Just a little bit more. Because I have heard from a few people that actually the fishes inside the test pond and also the channels, they are not doing well. So if fishes are not doing well, the water quality has a problem. And eventually, we will have a lot of mosquito larvas. That's quite a problem. Yeah, I think um, the uh, water channel you cannot really compare with the lake because it has the maximum depth in the middle is 75 centimeter or something like that. And uh, of course, in this flat thing, then the sun shines in, the water will get hot and all that. So, um, but even then, especially what you are saying now, I think once the lake is a circle and we have a current, we'll have totally different conditions. And I'm sure there are fishes which would do well in, um, in this lake also. When I uh, see in similar climatic conditions in Hong Kong, for example, there are so many in the Taitam water reservoirs and all that. There are so many similar lakes with huge koi and all that. I'm, I'm sure if we have the right um, fish um, inside and once it's completed, uh, you will see a lot of fish. And I, I think the water quality will be very, very nice. That's my, my impression. I have next Frederick. Can I give it to Frederick?
you said the first place to be connected uh, would be the system that includes or is close to the kindergarten. What a horrific idea. If the children in the kindergarten are getting water out of a plastic bag from the bottom of that filthy lake. I'm sorry, wait, no, I'm I sorry, let me finish. You have misunderstood. Let me just finish. Um, that is terrifying to me as a mother, as a, as in fact, as a community midwife, <laughs> which I happen to be. So um, what I'd like to say is personally, I'd like to invite experts. For example, um, there are here in India experts who have done incredible work on uh, water. Bring that person back in. Let it be, we have here the most ancient, as I understand it, the most ancient water system that uh, this whole uh, coastal area had the most incredibly functioning water system. Bring those experts back in. That's my request. I think that kindergarten thing you have misunderstood. Next to that kindergarten is uh, the pipeline going to the elephant water tower. And Luca wanted to connect it on that point. It has nothing to do with the water of the kindergarten. Uh, uh, actually, uh, I, I'm the next one here to. I got, I got the prize. Uh, Michael, uh, well, I was impressed by what I heard. And um, I think Mother uses each one of us in its own capacity, and you definitely have a capacity to get the energy to manifest, and that is appreciated. But you should also accept that there is a softening and a regulating power in the community over the 25 years or 30 years or 40 years. Um, if you would have allowed the time necessary from that drive, the community to be included, uh, we could have maybe avoided some grave mistakes. Coming to the point now, do you see any way enough water capacity to fill the lake without a desalination plant? My question. Okay. Um, we were actually all surprised how well this first section fills. We had never thought that um, it would be to the 5 meter 20 where the walls are now unfold and I think we have lost already now nearly 1 meter or something or 80 centimeter where we had to pump out the water because we have too much water and we didn't think of foiling it up to the 8 meter now our specialist is coming and on 25th the next container with foil comes in um, so we, were, we are actually surprised how much rainwater, harvested water is available. And um, when you think of the city of Orville, uh, we should think really of the city of Orville. Then there will be, I don't know, 20, 30 percent of the area sealed. Roofs, buildings, roads, places. And you have to do something with that water. You cannot just ignore the water. It will form rivulets and swap away houses and all that. You have to have a water management system where you collect that water and then you have two choices. You let it go into the sea or you, for example, bring it back to the Matrimandia Lake. And I think we will have much more water uh, uh, water harvested water in the city than what the Matrimandia Lake can even absorb. Okay, that you mean to say, even though it is five meter, might only represent a third of the total volume required because it is obviously widening on the top. But nevertheless, you think if it's done well and consciously and so on, we are not dependent on the desalination plant. Is that what you're saying? Um, I think we are not dependent on the desalination plant if the city also comes up. Uh, but um, we very much hope that the desalination plant will come soon. Okay. Um, that brings me to the second point. The very fact that you said we lost 80 centimeters is because there is a disconnect between 
the community and the executive and between you and the executives. As uh, uh, I said, it would be good if these four people or five or six people would be sitting here because I understand that the test leg, and you don't use the word test anymore, you use as, as the first section of the leg, I noticed the difference, uh, could have carried on and raising it to its full length, but by an unplanned decision, no, 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 we carry on over now to the next section. So it, even from that point of testing, how much water actually would have been accumulated, it was stopped because the ongoing process of completing the test leg was stopped in favor of starting the new one. That brings me to the second one, and I don't want to elaborate too much. I think we don't want to stop your drive. We don't want to stop the lake. We don't want to stop the mother's vision to manifest. But allow a certain pre-planning that we can say, let the first test lake be finished. Can we not figure out, instead of dumping the soil now here, can we not figure out some way where it is permanently located? Can there not be, even at the cost of delaying to some time, sometimes the process is much more important, and that's where I agree with Orada, you come and go, you don't know the effect of the process here. You come, you bring the energy and the impetus, but you have to allow the process to take step, even if it's frustrating. Okay, I think you know my opinion about the process, no? I don't want to repeat it, I've told it often enough. And I think the fact that we continue, for example, now, the earth, what we are excavating now from the second section, we are using it to enlarge that small hill just next to it, to put up an uphill power storage, which is the state of the art to store energy. Where I come back, Sauro, to your question. Um, that is the cleanest way how to store energy compared to all these dirty batteries which are put up. Uh, each solar panel has a battery. Now, if you compare that, and we would have a centralized storage system, an uphill power storage with no batteries, and whole of Oroville could run on green energy, uh, like solar panels, house-made, where we uh, store the uh, overcapacity at lunch hours, and we have then electricity in the night, and we don't have to use the battery. I can't see how people don't see this and, and don't appreciate that. And here, there we are um, reaching the best and most efficient and most ecological way of an electric system and nobody cares, everybody just wants to be heard and block and stop and process. Uh, the process has become a self-purpose here in Oroville, which doesn't serve any purpose but blocking. Yeah, but now actually... Okay, but you may have to have a bit more patience because my taxi is waiting and if I don't go now, I miss my flight to Hong Kong. question is on a human level, on a heart level. The environmental question, we don't have time because I wouldn't want you to miss your flight to Hong Kong, Bangkok or New York. What makes you feel like you have the absolute mission on this story? I want to know how you, as Michael, carry that. And I know that Arjun and Tuan has been very irritated by us, because I see, but I am as irritated as their reaction as they're irritated by us. Orville 
is a long process. It's not getting somewhere, it's the journey. And I think Mother has said, Orville will be. When? She never said. And it's the way we do things. It's not what we do. Okay, I tell you what uh, is my feeling. There are 101 opinions. Everybody has another opinion. And there's one opinion which is coming from the mother. So that has more value than this or this or this. And Everybody does the same here. Everybody tries to implement his uh, vision and what he thinks is best, and I also try to do it. Yeah, and you think a, a larger dimension is worse than a smaller one? I apologize because we have a list of people who wanted to speak and we have to say no to people, so please, please accept that you are the last person to speak, I guess, because Michael needs to leave. No, because since, since, 50, since 50 years, I feel we are haunted by a difficulty to translate mother's vision into reality. And with what kind of processes, and what she really said, and where she changed her meaning. And when I see the sketches here, for example, I see a geometry, but I see also just circles. These are the four zones, the yeah. astral zones. But when I now no, listen to mother with this, then the zones should look like that. No, I mean, the sketches are sketches, they are symbolic. And this is my haunting situation since 50 years to come to something between mother's vision, where she changed also from year to year, to what we have to do and should do. And I appreciate very much what you have done. And I find it amazing even to match it with this uh, technical uh, linking with water supply. Yeah? I mean, you, you pull it with Harald Kraft the, the rabbit out of the hat, I feel that, really. But you come to another system which is partly not matching the geography and many other features. And for example, the 10 meter difference from one side to the other, one could have so many versions of a lake. And also even her vision which was, uh, which was growing between the ideal of the Japanese garden with lakes and nature, and then Roger's uh, vision, which was the leading thing. And I was the first one, not the first one, but I was very much impressed by that, and it's till today. Um, and the Machi Mandi gives the standard. I know that also, as an architect. And as one who feels is asked to design, to, to do something with, and the technical means, but when you force, I don't say now you do it, but it, I see the danger. One forces a system of technicalities and artificialities to, to marry a very, very complex system yeah, into something where you say, we have to do it now like this. And this is my question, because mother okay, is much I'm more flexible sorry, than we ever. Now, yeah. uh, you can continue if you want to, but I have to leave. <laughs> <laughs>